at some point, you might want to say, you know, there are different things that you can do for yourself. Other than that, you're going to be sitting in the corner of your house, we call it a house inside prison, cell, mm -hmm. looking at the wall, doing dead time. That was a very good question. Thank you for that. A couple more. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, excuse me if I missed it, but uh, I, 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 I'm just kind of interested to know whether you were ever exonerated. Yes, yes. They, they actually DNA'd the person that was responsible for committing the crime, and he died in prison. Uh, it's strange, you know. Uh, I have a friend, and uh, he... Uh, he was the director of M2W2 visitation program in British Columbia, Wayne Northey. And we would often talk about, uh, hard to explain this really, prisoners feel very strongly about things that have been done wrong to women, children. And uh, sometimes those type of people, they decide that they don't want to be in a population where the men are out to get them because they feel so strongly about those things and they go into protection. I worked with Peter, I'm sorry, I worked with Wayne, Peter, I'm sorry. I worked with Wayne Northey and we often would talk and you know, it seemed that my, my belief in, in doing right and forgiveness Forgiveness is so, so important, and mercy is so, so important to, to, to have people feel clean, to feel uh, that they're free of any kind of baggage whatsoever. But I would always go up to the point that we were talking about people that were not those that had done terrible things. You know, I, I always seem to kind of back away at that point and say, well, I don't know. <laughs> should they get mercy? Should they get forgiveness? And the truth is, yes, they should. And it's remarkable what it can do for people inside those situations. But I always had trouble with that one. And I uh, haven't talked to uh, Wayne. Oh, actually, I did talk to him uh, within the last month, trying to help out a lady that's wrongfully convicted. And uh, she just got out on day parole. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard, equation for some people to see the difference that forgiveness and mercy can make in people's lives, especially when they're the type of people that we want to have the least to do with, people that have terrible things in their life. Please yes, I Peter. One thing I know is the fact that the woman that just got out on parole was wrongfully convicted. One thing I've seen in the system is that if a person doesn't show remorse, it's not likely they'll get out on parole. But it's very hard or impossible to show remorse for something you haven't done. So it's a bit of a catch-22. I wonder if you could just comment on that within the system and how parole looks at people uh, when they're trying to uh, parole them. I'm going to sit in a chair for a second and drink some water. Uh, I can. I can comment on it quite easily. I won't mention a name, but I had my parole officer sit down with me and say, David, 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 listen, listen to me. I, uh, <clears throat> I want you to go in and I want you to tell the parole board that you're guilty. You're you, 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 you can expect a lot better reception by doing this than by going in there and telling them that you're not guilty. And I looked at her, because I liked her. She was a nice person. I thought she was a nice person. And I said, listen, if you never committed a crime as horrible as the crime that I was accused of, would you go in and tell people that you did this crime? She says, yes. <laughs> and I said, no and I won't do it. I had the National Parole Board, a man, tell my mother, who was in on the parole hearing with me while I was in Collins Bay Penitentiary, you 
don't really know your son. That was basically, he was saying, he's a monster, you know? He didn't say those words, but he said, you don't really know your son. And she tried to just say in her own words that she knew as a mother that I wasn't responsible for having committed that crime. And moms always know. I mean, dads know sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but moms seem to know a lot better than dads. I hope that answered your question, Peter. All right. Was it you at the point? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Mr. Wine. I I hear your 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 the words that you're saying and the feelings that you're expressing when it when it comes to say your relationship with Peter, the the one on one visits and, and how important uh, they are. My question comes, what about uh, all the faith groups, the, the different churches that, that come out to the institutions offering uh, Bible study programs, uh, Catholic communion services, or rosary services, do they enter into the picture, or how do you, are they important? I think for any person in this room that is into believing in Jesus and uh, holding God as important in their life, that if they don't take the word, the Bible, and use that as a way to direction themselves inside those relationships with God and Jesus, that they're missing out on so very much. So the answer to your question is yes, of course, those are very important because it's the word that we're talking about. Uh, I'd say it was maybe about a year ago, maybe maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, that I decided that that, that word was going to become important to me. And uh, I don't know my Bible. I didn't read my Bible 29 <laughs> times, but you know, I have read through bits and pieces of it quite a few times, especially John. But uh, yes, the word really, really is significant to everyone here if in fact you have <coughs> a direction that you're trying to find for yourself inside the equation of being a Christian, you need the word. Would you agree, sir? Absolutely, yes. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.